Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. At the moment I am subscribing to Warhammer 40,000 Conquest magazine. This is a weekly magazine from Hatchet Partworks um, in association with Games Workshop. It's $7.99 an issue and I receive four issues a month in a single bundle. I've just recently received my latest bundle and this is issue 10. And this is a particularly exciting issue because as eagle-eyed viewers may have noticed... It comes with a Mephitic Blight Hauler miniature. Which is, this is the first time they've given away... I say given away, they're not given away, are they? You're paying for it. But this is the first time they've included a vehicle with one of the magazines. And it is the entire frame. It's the complete thing. Which is very cool because um, this is one of the easy build vehicles uh, that retails for £15. So um, if you were to walk into a Games Workshop store and buy this guy... Um, you would you would pay fifteen pounds. Obviously, as a subscriber, you pay seven ninety nine. That's a fantastic saving. You know, you're, you're looking at what's that, seven seven pounds and a penny. Seven pounds and a penny of, of savings, which is fantastic. And the miniature itself is very cool. I love the detail on it. Um, I don't have one of these, so this is this is the first one of these I've got. Um, I've got like the um, the blight drone, which came in. Um, no no fear but this is the first blight hauler that i've got and so very happy to have this in my collection looking forward to putting it together and um yeah i'm very happy that um i was going to buy one of these and i was going to you know i was going to pay i wouldn't have paid 15 pounds for it because i would have bought it online and would have got um 15 20 percent off but still would have been, ended up paying significantly more than i've paid by subscribing to this particular magazine which is cool and look it's got a big base um, this guy will go together without glue because he's easy build and he is, um, you can see he's got pegs and things, but I will put him together with glue because it's always better to use a bit of glue. Cool. So right off the bat, this is an exciting issue. Um, this is an exciting issue because it's giving away, um, it's, it's the first vehicle that's given away. Um, so they're going to include the rules for vehicles, which is something that's, uh, if you're, if you're learning how to play one of 40,000 by subscribing to this magazine you're getting a, an, an extra facet of the game that you haven't had up until this point um you know they introduced psych the psychic phase a little while back and now they're introducing vehicles so that's quite cool it's sort of something something brand new to get your teeth into but of course it's also exciting because it's a big miniature it's good value um at 7.99 so that's cool as well let's have a little look inside the magazine there they are Ugh. i do i do i do love the blight hall i think it's such a cute miniature um which is kind of weird to say cute but i do i do think it's cute and kind of funny um games workshop is obviously is it's the grim dark why my 40,000 is the grim dark future but there there is still room for humor and I've, I find that some of the Death Guard stuff is quite humorous. Um, in a dark sort of a way. And I, I do find these quite funny. They're almost chibi style. So here we go. Bring forth the Blight Haulers. Unleash them on the enemy. And let them feed upon them. Yeah. So here we go. In this little breakdown of what they've got. They've got Missile Launcher. Multi Melter. A bile spurt and a gnashing maw. All of those things sound nice, don't they? Hello. Can I introduce you to my bile spurt? Oof. Right. So, yeah. Blight Hauler War Gear. Classified. And then we've got some, some history of some battles. The raid on Rel 4 Prime. And then that, I believe, is the cover art for... If you were to buy the Blight Hauler at retail, it would come in a box with that particular picture on the cover of the box. I believe. Okie dokie, so here we go. We're into the how to build section. So there's a shot of the frame. Um, some advice on how to identify numbers and parts and things. And then wait for it. Wait for it. Where, where, where's my clipper guides? Where's my clipper guidance? There is no advice on how to hold the clipper. Oh, look at that. And I built it up and everything. 
Um, yeah, no, no, uh... Oh, no, there it is. It's right down there at the bottom. They've just changed where it is. There it is. Clipper safety. Um, and they've not bothered mentioning glue safety because you don't actually need glue to put this guy together. Like I say, I do recommend using glue. Uh, use a little bit of plastic glue. Use it sparingly. Plastic glue actually forms its bond by melting the parts together. So you do not want to get it all over the miniature um, unless you want it to look extra battle scarred because it will actually scar the plastic. Um, nice simple instructions. Um, uh, even though it's an easy build, um, you're going to have to take care with this one. It's got a lot more parts because it's a large vehicle. Um, it's got a lot more parts than, than other easy build miniatures that you've seen previously. Um, but just follow the numbering. Um, the numbering tells you the order to do things. So you put part one and part two together before you attach part three. Um, as long as you follow the numbering, um, look at the diagrams carefully. Um, the blue bits on the diagrams, that shows you a, the, a previously assembled part, um, which is very similar to how Lego do their assembly guides if you've ever built Lego. So just be aware of that. Um, follow the numbering and you shouldn't go wrong. Um, you may want to do a dry fit. If you're going to glue it, you may want to dry fit it first, but you know, just go for it. And you will end up with a super cute blight hauler to unleash upon the ultramarines. And there we go, we've got the paint guides, we've got all of the paints from previous issues, including Null and Oil and Agrax Earthshade. And really nice, super zoomed in pictures showing you how to apply the different paint, where to go with the different bits and bobs. Um, I am, I, I quite like the paint, the way they've dealt with the paint guide in this magazine. They have gone extra large with the images. They really have broken it down, um, you know, there's a whole page on which bits to paint with Bugman's Glow, and they've shown you, you don't normally get that that level of, you know, now turn the model around and paint this bit, and now turn the model around and paint this bit. You don't normally get that level of, of detail in a painting guide, which is quite, it's particularly useful for people who are new to painting. So I do like the way they're doing that. It's very good. There's applying the lead belcher. Abaddon Black, the Retributor Armour, and then splodging on the Null Oil, and then the Agrax Earthshade. And in very short order, you get left with that. Now, that is not too shabby at all, is it? It's pretty cool. You know, you, you've got to be happy with that, really. You've got to be. You know, if, if you're new to painting and you can stick together a model and uh, apply a few different paints and you end up with something that looks like that, I think you've got to be happy with that. But um, the good thing is, it says here, future issues of Conquest will include more paints. We'll return to the Blight Hauler then to add extra details and colours. So, you know, it's not finished, but already that's, you know, that's when I first started um, playing Games Workshop way, way, way way back i mean we were way back way back think think back and then go back a bit further and then it was before that um it, my first painting job didn't look like that my first my first painting job looked nothing like that um i mean i i did collect a skeleton army so that i could just paint everything bone and then dry brush it but you know it, that, that level of detail that took took a while for me to get to the stage where i was painting like that so if you can do that by the time you're, you're 10 issues into this magazine, a couple of months into this magazine. That's fantastic. That's really, really nicely done. Well done to this magazine. And then we've got a vehicle on deck and we've got a new tutorial mission that introduces the concept of using a vehicle. And there it is, light hauler. Rule its rules. Rules for its special weapons. And um, we've got the Librarian and the Intercessors to try and take it down. Love these diagrams as well. I think they've done a really good job of, of showing how everything works out. And the step-by-step -step rules are fantastic for learning. Um, I think it's going to be quite difficult later on sort of if you're trying to reference rules and you go oh, hold on a minute i need to just double check how i do that because obviously a lot of the rules get repeated from issue to issue um and then you have to think oh which issue had that extra bit of rule in so 
it's a little bit um, disparate in terms of going back to, but for, for stepping you through it at the, for the first time, fantastic stuff. I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed with this magazine overall. Um, anybody who's watched my previous videos will know that there's some magazines that I find a bit boring, um, either because they've, they've reproduced, um, they've given, they've included miniatures they've given away previously, um, or there was an issue that was just paints. And and so, I, I, you know, sometimes I, I feel a, a little bit like some issues aren't particularly interesting. But overall, taken as, as a whole, taken as a, you know, beginning to end product so far, I think they've done a really good job of introducing the game. They've done a really good job of breaking down painting, which is something obviously which a lot of people find uh, intimidating. Uh, assembly and, and painting are kind of two of the big things that will stop a lot of people playing games, workshop games, because they will go, well, you know, I would, but all that assembly and painting is all a bit, it's all a bit much. This has done just a really good job of breaking that down and going, look, it's not that tough. It's nothing to be scared of, and you can get good results without being a great painter. So overall, I'm, I think this magazine is, is doing a really good job so far. Uh, I think it's going to, I do feel like the magazine will reach a point where it stops being value in, valuable in that way, and it will become just a way to get the miniatures on the cover. And as long as the value stays in terms of they're giving away, give, I keep saying giving away, they're not giving away, you're, ba you're paying for it, it's not giving away. But as long as they're including miniatures, um, it works out value compared to buying them individually, it's worth it. But I do think at some point the magazine is going to start being just a bit of a waste of paper, really. All right. And then, oh, oh, no, there were spoilers there. You've probably already seen it. So next issue. This is my last issue from this bundle. So we've got to wait until my next bundle to see these guys. But issue 11 is coming with a unit of three aggressors. That's very cool because um, they're easy build miniatures. But those, you know, I think they retail for £15. Pounds. Um, so that's good value in itself. And then issue 12, finally, at long last, because I feel like the Death Guard have been getting shortchanged a little bit in terms of the heroes, because the Ultramarines have got a lieutenant and a librarian, and up till now the Death Guard have had nothing. But finally, in issue 12, we get a Death Guard character. We get the Foul Blightspawn. I do not have a Foul Blightspawn, so I am very much looking forward to receiving him, especially because he has a super, super cute Nurgling carrying a grenade for him, which is just brilliant. This is what I was saying about um, about the humour in, in the grim dark future. It is there. Sometimes you just have to look for it, and it doesn't always it doesn't always look the way you would expect it to look, but that is just an amazing little Nurgling there. I'm super, 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 super cute. Um, but yeah, so that's very cool as well, and it's about time that we had some Death Guard characters. Um, and that's it for now. As always, I will put up the running total of the values of if you bought every issue of the magazine versus if you bought all of the products that come with the magazine at retail. And um, yeah, the value is still still good at the moment. We've had some issues that have not been very good value, but this one certainly is. And um, yeah, good issue. And until next time, Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.